today. The former mayor of the city of Baltimore, Catherine Pugh, is going to find out how long she'll have to stay in federal prison for breaking laws on corruption and taxes. Last night, Pugh's attorney released a 13 minute video submitted to the court. In that video, she issued an apology to the citizens of Baltimore. She says she is sorry and that she messed up, but she does not say why she did it. Here's a portion of that video. I being guilty and by being involved in all of this that has led me here today has created such a ringing negativity on our city. And, and you can watch that entire video on our website, WMAR2news.com. I got to point out again that music that's on the video, we didn't put that on there. It's on it when the yeah, video was, was sent to us. Video yeah, already. that was yep. sent. We have team coverage all morning long here. We got Mark Roper over at City Hall with what the Comptroller is saying about all this. She was a business partner with Catherine Pugh, but we're going to start with Megan Knight over at the federal courthouse. That is where Catherine Pugh will be sentenced later today. And Pugh's defense team, in addition to that video, submitted a lot of letters from people who know her to the judge in this case. All right, looks like we're having some difficulties with her uh, with Megan's microphone, so we'll try to get that fixed and head back out to her yeah. soon. The key to remember, though, are the, the numbers uh, that are going to be coming out of that uh, sentencing hearing today. The federal prosecutors have asked for 57 months, so four years and nine months. Mm -hmm. Pew's team has asked for one year and one day, so there's a range there, and it'll be interesting to see if the judge stays within that or goes out outside right. of it. We just don't know yet. You posted a poll on there. See what yeah. people in the community think, which is which is really important. We want to hear from you. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to continue our team coverage. We'll try to get Megan back soon. Um, we're going to go to Mark Roper now. Yeah, he's uh, live at City Hall and he talked with the mayor's former tax preparer, the comptroller for the city of Baltimore. Still Joan Pratt. What'd she have to say, Mark, about all this? Good morning, Christian and Ashley. Well, she says she feels deceived by the former mayor, yet despite feelings of deception, she actually still expressed compassion for Pew, who is facing several years in prison this morning. I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. I'm not angry. I'm disappointed that I was deceived, like the University of Maryland Medical System, the Associated Black Charity. You, you, the, the citizens were deceived. The media was deceived. I was deceived. Federal prosecutors' 90-page sentencing memorandum outlines Pew's Healthy Holly money laundering scheme involved a $20,000 illegal election contribution for her 2016 mayoral campaign. But as court documents state, instead of the check being made out to her campaign, it was made out to her Pigtown store, Two Chic Boutique, a store Pew owned with Comptroller Pratt. I had no knowledge of the $20,000 check when I filed the tax return. I had no knowledge. The sentencing memorandum further states the two chic partners, including Pew as the majority owner, failed to report the store received the $20,000 as income in 2016. In fact, the documents state it was the largest deposit in the company's history. It also points out the store's bank account only had about $961 in it in February that year. But even with the extra $20,000, nine months later, the store had a negative balance of $301.54 by the end of November 2016. The entity has always operated at loss, and the members put money in. There were bills that had to be paid, so it wasn't unusual that, that, it, 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 that it incurred a loss in that year. According to Merriam-Webster's online dictionary, a comptroller is a public official who audits government accounts and sometimes certifies expenditures. So we asked how someone with her accounting knowledge and experience as city comptroller could not realize where the $20,000 came from and that the numbers didn't add up for a business which was not very profitable in the first place. If you have no knowledge of something, how can you know about it? Have you ever been deceived? Have you ever been deceived? I'm sure I have. It's okay. Definitely. Well, so was I. So I had no about, knowledge. How do you feel about that? I, I, I don't feel good about it. You know, I'm here trying to defend something that I had no knowledge of. No, I don't feel good about it. And despite not being on speaking terms and having feelings of deception by former Mayor Catherine Pugh, Pratt has this to say about her former colleague. Well, you know what? Right now, she's the legal process is taking this course, and it is my hope that they have compassion for her.
Now, Mayor Jack Young was asked his thoughts on what his predecessor's fate should be, and he didn't really have much to say other than that it's up to a judge to decide and that he does not question the sentencing guidelines. We are live in downtown Baltimore at City Hall. Mark Roper, WMAR2 News. Okay, Mark, thanks very much for that. Yeah, we had some problems with Megan Knight's microphone, but I think we got her back over at the federal courthouse now. Yeah, we want to head back out to Megan. Megan, we were talking about those submitted letters uh, for people that know her, and, you know, do we think that these letters will determine help determine her sentence? Will it maybe give some leniency? Well, they could, uh, Ashley. We did talk to one legal expert who thinks that uh, they could definitely be a determining factor in today's sentencing. You know, these letters coming from people who have known former Mayor Catherine Pugh throughout the various stages of her life, from close friends and family to politicians who worked with her in Annapolis when she was a state senator and, of course, here in Baltimore when she was mayor. And each of these letters has a similar tone and message to it, asking the judge, Judge Deborah Cashinow, for leniency and a lighter sentence when she makes that determination later later on this morning. One of those letters, for example, coming from Pew's godson, who says that he believes if it weren't for her, he'd still be using drugs. Then there's another letter that was written by Kurt Schmoke, the president of the University of Baltimore and former mayor himself, who said that Pew helped inform and empower people when it came to voting. So, of course, the big question is, will these letters and that video make any difference in Judge Cashinell's decision? Well, legal analyst Andy Alperstein says it could, but it's just going to be one of many factors that will be used to determine her sentence. Those letters are there to let the, the judge hear the good deeds that she's done so that when weighing it all out, the judge is pulled down. She's pulled to a lower number. If I was a betting man, I would guess somewhere between 18 months and three years. So that's his prediction right there. Now, Pew's defense team, of course, wanting a one-year, one-day sentence, while federal prosecutors are looking at something a little tougher. They're asking for nearly five years of prison time. We will find that out later this morning at 10 o'clock when that sentencing hearing begins right here at the federal courthouse in downtown Baltimore. We're live in downtown Baltimore. Megan Knight, WMAR2 News. Okay, Megan, thanks very much for that. Now, here's a look at all the events that led up to Catherine Pugh being charged by federal authorities. The first news broke about her Healthy Holly book deal with the University of Maryland Medical System. That was back in the middle of March of last year. And at that time, she was serving. In addition to being the mayor, she was on the hospital system's board of directors. She resigned from that board March 18th and returned $100,000 from that book deal two days later. Pugh was then hospitalized with pneumonia March 25th, one week after that. April 1st, the healthcare care firm Kaiser Permanente announced that it also had a book deal with Catherine Pugh. That same day she started the leave of absence, which she said was to recover from pneumonia. City Council President then took over as the acting mayor of Baltimore. The next day, Associated Black Charities, which handles $12 million in city taxpayer money through the city's Children and Youth Fund and the Baltimore City Public School System, announced that they also had book deals with Catherine Pugh. On April 6th, through a spokesman, Pugh said she would be coming back to work when her health recovered, even with the Healthy Holly scandal. Then the calls for her resignation began. The entire city council and the entire Baltimore City delegation in Annapolis called for Pew to resign on April 8th. Three of her top aides were suspended just two days later. On April 12th, the board of directors of the Greater Baltimore Committee called for her resignation as well. Five more staffers went on to leave on April 18th. There were seven total on leave by April 19th. Then three aides were fired by acting Mayor Jack Young on April 24th. And then came April 25th of last year. That's the day when agents from the FBI and the IRS raided Catherine Pugh's home in the Ashburton neighborhood in Northwest Baltimore. There were also raids at City Hall and at other properties associated with the mayor. That same day, Governor Hogan called on Catherine Pugh to resign. The CEO of the University of Maryland Medical System resigned on April 26th, and then the acting mayor, Jack Young, fired two more Pew staffers, and then it was May the 2nd of last year that Catherine Pugh's attorney announced she would resign. After those raids, federal authorities have been building their case, and then they announced the indictments on the 11 counts against the former mayor of Baltimore late last year, to which she eventually pleaded guilty on some of those, leading to the sentencing, which is today. Yes, yeah, so you're able to see how this uh, all unraveled. When Catherine Pugh's sentence comes down, we're going to be sure to bring it to you on air and online at WMAR2news.com.